All right, we will call this group insurance committee meeting to order at 4.08 p.m. on September 25th, 2024. Uh, Rachel, can you please do the roll call? Um, Jeff Bazo? Present. Eric Diamond is absent. Mike Dixon, absent. Um, I am here. Brenda Costello? Present. Uh, Vicki was absent, and um, Don Etcheberry is absent. Um, Robert Munson? Present. Joseph Silvera? Present. Mary Beth Akers? Is not here. And Gwen Partos? Present. Thank oh. you. Maybe we do have a quorum. Great, thank you. And Brenda and Gwen, welcome to the committee. Appreciate having you here. Okay, we're going to move on to our first item, 2.01, presentation and discussion of Washoe County School District Insurance Internal Service Fund as of June 2024. This item is for presentation and discussion only, and we have our district's controller, Marty Williams, here to present this item. Good afternoon. This is uh, going to be a pretty short presentation because the reports are very clean. Uh, our revenues have been very consistent from the last uh, year. Our expenses uh, went down significantly, mostly through lower claims. Um, our cash is good. We did not need to supplement from the retirement fund. And our uh, net position is going up. The only issue of real concern, or that I should point out, the uh, prescription rebates looks significantly lower because we corrected the accrual that was set at last year. Sorry, Marty, what page is that on? That's on page two, I'm page sorry. Page two, okay, thank you. So the prescription rebates last year, they had an accrual, accrual that they'd put in that we couldn't justify. So we reversed that out. So that's why the pres prescription rebates for the year is down to 4.3 million for 24, where it was, it was 7.4 in 23. The only other thing that looks a little odd is the OPEB retirement uh, reimbursement at 2.6 million this year as opposed to 4 million last year and that was simply we didn't need to transfer more money so we didn't. Okay and then sorry are there any questions for Marty on this item? No? All right so um, have we not been able to pull from the OPEB trust fund over the top of that revenue towards the bottom section of the revenues of 2.6 million, then we would have had a, a change in that position, which would have been a loss of a million dollars, right? Correct. correct. If we hadn't pulled down the 2.6, we would have had a loss of uh, 1.4, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, seeing no other questions, Marty, thank you for your time today. You're very welcome. Moving on to item 2.02, .02, presentation and discussion of Washoe County School District Group Insurance Claims Experience Report. As of August 2024, this item is for presentation and discussion only, and we have Lloyd Barnes here today to present this information. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, new members. Um, Lloyd Barnes with LP Insurance Services, for the record, uh, going over the August uh, 2024 Claims report, um, I'll go with maybe a little bit more detail for some of the newer members just to give you a, a little sense of what this is. This is a report that we provide um, every month to the committee and the, and the, the district and the committee. Um, this is data that is supplied to us from, uh, from Anthem Blue Cross as your, as your administrator. We put it together in hopefully a little bit uh, more easy to read, usable format. Um, those, once you're here for a while, you'll be great at reading these documents. So um, exhibit one, as you can see shortly here. Right, we're getting close. There we are right there. That's okay. Just fine. Um, exhibit one is uh, an executive summary. We just try to try to highlight some of the items from the report. Um, and again, this is uh, claims paid through October 
of, uh, of this year. So eight months, and then we compared that to the 12 months of the prior year. Um, so you can see there from an uh, employee count perspective, um, your employee counts this year are up about 2.5%, 2.4%. Uh, dependent units, those of individuals covering dependents is pretty flat at 0.2 up, and total number of dependents is also fairly flat, uh, up about 0.7. On a monthly claims basis, um, you can see there the current year is running slightly higher than last year at 5.8% uh, over last year at $6.28 million a month versus uh, $5.9 million a month. When we blend that out and divide that by the number of employees on the plan on a composite, that's what composite means, um, it's a composite cost of uh, $878 uh, per employee per month, employee and retiree, just whenever I say employee, I always mean employee and retiree, just for, the, for um, everyone's note, uh, versus $850 last year, so up about 3.5%, 3.3% actually. Uh, when we add in the fixed costs that are running slightly down from last year at, eight, at 382, averaging $382,000 a month compared to $387,000 a month last year, down about uh, 1.4, we then roll it all together. So you're running um, at about $6.6 .6 million this year on a monthly basis versus 6.3, about 5.3% higher, but on a composite basis, it's 931 versus 905, up about 3%. So that's how we read this particular uh, exhibit. Um, that's total, so that's rolled up all the information for all your plans. Then we do provide detailed breakout um, in some of these exhibits that I usually don't go over, so that you can, you can refer back to that if, if needed or if desired. Um, the bottom section there, uh, we also track uh, large claims for the plan, just to keep an eye on, on large claims. And um, the way these are tracked, and I'll detail it a little bit further as we get into the other part of the report, is these accumulate per claimant as the year goes on. So, you know, year, year, month one, someone had $1,000 in claims. Month two, they had another $1,000 in claims. We would report $2,000. They've accumulated $2,000 in claims. So it's, it's, a, it's a running total of the claims per individual. So. Um, we do start tracking that for what we call large claims, and in your case, those are claims over $212,000. So very big numbers. These are the these are the really expensive claims that uh, that are, are good for you as as um, committee members just to keep your eye on. Um, obviously, we don't provide any personal health information or anything at, at that level of detail. This year, uh, so far this year, you have 18 that have hit that threshold. Uh, last year in total, you had 29, but as you can imagine, because of the way it's tracked, they grow over time. So th there'll be more, and they get a little scary, so let's don't, don't get too worried about them. But, uh, moving on to Exhibit 2. Exhibit 2 is just a little uh, visual representation of how the plan is performing on a uh, rolling 12-month average claims cost basis. So that's the blue line that sort of squiggles up and to the right. Um, unfortunately, in our world of healthcare, costs rarely go down, and if they do, they don't go down for very long. So um, what you'll see there is sort of that average trend. You see that it tilted up uh, quite a bit in the years of uh, 21 and 22, uh, and 23 to some degree sort of, sort of peaked out there. We have had a bit of a stabilization of that, um, and it has, has, has mitigated a little bit, as Marty referenced in his report. Um, so. Right now, things are, 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 are stable. So, you know, we're, 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 everyone's holding our breath and, and just trying to do everything we can to keep that in place. So um, this is just, a, like I said, a good visual representation of, of how the plan is going. Smooths things out, too. When you look at monthly claims, they can jump up and down quite a bit. This sort of tends to smooth that out. Uh, the next report we go over in a little bit more detail is Exhibit 3 or the next page we go over is Exhibit 3, and this just basically breaks everything down by month. So you can see there um, the month of August is, is the, the most current month, and um, these, this information rolls up to that executive summary, so I, I usually don't go into a lot of detail, but you can see there um, on each of these lines we break down all of the different components of your cost. 
uh, medical claims, prescription drug claims, dental claims, vision claims, uh, both for employees and dependents added together. So for the month of August, uh, your total claims for employees was uh, 5.924 million on line 10, and that's a composite cost per employee of $812.53. If you look over to the right on that line 11, you can see how that compares to last year. So employee claims are up about 6.8% uh, per, per employer per person on the plan at 706. Dependent claims, look at that also similarly on line 18, you can see uh, dependent claims for the month were $2 million, almost exactly. And that compares uh, to last year, um, the average for this year compares to last year, 1.7 versus 1.72 1. versus 1.69, up about 1.7%. Then roll that all together down on lines uh, 30 and 31. For the, so the total expenses for the month uh, were 7.9 million, uh, 9 7.98 million, and a com on a composite basis, that's 1,094.69 up uh, corresponding 5.8% for total and 3.3% on a composite cost basis. We then add in the fixed costs. So these were the claims costs up above. Fixed costs are administrative costs that you pay to various vendors to help you manage your plan. Fortunately, these are a much smaller part of the, of the equation of your, of your program. Um, and you can see there for the month of uh, August, the total fixed costs were 384864 When we roll up all that together on line 35, you can see the total cost per the plan for the month was uh, 1147.48 per employee and retiree. Over to the far right on that line, you can see that that um, represents uh, a monthly average of 931.88 this year versus 905.73 last year or the 2.9% that was referenced in the executive summary. Questions on this before we move on? All right, well, we usually skip through the next few exhibits. So those broke, get, break in the detail of actives, retirees, and the different plans. And we usually just jump to the um, large claims on exhibit 12. So this is, uh, again, what I was referencing is regarding those large claims, and you can see how they are accumulating over the course of the, of the policy year, the stop-loss policy year. Uh, I'll stop there for a second. Um, because you're a self-funded plan, uh, your plan purchases insurance to protect itself against really, really large claims. Okay, so you actually buy insurance policy to protect against any, any single claim, single individual that has claims over a certain amount. Your plan's threshold for that, as you can see on the next page, is $425,000. So any individual that has $425,000 in a given year, you get reimbursed from the insurance company that you buy this insurance from. Um, we, call it, we call it stop loss insurance. You'll hear that term here and there. Um, but we do start tracking claims at the two hundred and twelve. dollars $212,000 number just so we can get them on the radar and, and they, they can be watched. Uh, fortunately, although we do have a lot, we have 19, um, or I'm sorry, 18 individuals that are being tracked uh, from the, that standpoint. None have exceeded that $425,000 level. That's why exhibit 13 is blank right now. So you can just sort of see how those are accumulating. Um, Sometimes it's actually not good to not have them go over because if you have, if you have just a few claims but they go over that $425,000, you would get money, the plan would get money back. If we have a whole lot of them under that $425,000 level, then the plan is taking on all of those expenses. So another thing you'll get to learn all about over the course of the next few years, right? Richard, or Robert? <laughs> <laughs> Just a few. Um, okay, that's all I had. Any other questions or any questions that I can answer or clarify? It doesn't look like it. Lloyd, thanks as always. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, moving on to item 2.03, presentation and discussion of Washoe County School District Group Insurance Wellness Program Report. 
to cover current events and programs as of April 2024 for presentation and discussion only. And Mackenzie, I believe you're going to start this item? Yep. Okay. I'll actually take this item for the first time. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Mackenzie Hard for the uh, record. It's nice to see everyone. Um, I'm super excited for our wellness program updates today because our first one is I get the opportunity to introduce our new wellness coordinator. Emily is here with us today. She started with us about three weeks ago. Um, she comes with a, to us with a very strong public health background, running nonprofits, um, and also working in some disease investigation and management uh, during COVID. So she has a wide breadth of knowledge, um, and we welcome her to our team. Uh, at our next meeting, she will be the one giving this presentation in partnership with me. So uh, welcome, Emily. Uh, our second update for our wellness program is our health assessment. Our health assessment is open on Virgin Pulse. So members are able, when I say members, I want to clarify, I mean employees and employee spouses are both eligible to complete the health assessment on Virgin Pulse prior to December 1st. If they complete this online survey, it takes less than 15 minutes. They will earn a monthly $40 health premium discount in 2025. Same process as it's been for the past few years, same platform, um, so members should be pretty familiar with this process. And our last update for wellness program today is our wellness screenings. Our wellness screenings will be live in the next few weeks. Members will be getting communication from both our benefits email and our wellness email. They will also be getting a physical mailer in the mail very soon, within the next few days. <laughs> Any questions on wellness? Looks like we don't have any questions. Emily, welcome to the team. Sorry, Robert. That's okay. I was just going to ask, um, <clears throat> at your wellness um, screenings, are they going to provide have flu shots available and possibly COVID shots, or should people just go to like pharmacies like CVS or something for that? We'll have the standard immunizations we've had historically, but we won't have a COVID uh, shot this year. Um, there's it's a pretty cumbersome process for people to remember their card and then have record of everything. So it's better for them to visit one of any pharmacy and it'll be covered there. Okay, thank you, Mackenzie. That uh, wraps up item 2.03. Uh, next we'll move to item 2.04, presentation and discussion of the Washoe County School District open enrollment process for fall 2024. This item is for presentation and discussion only and Mackenzie Howran is going to walk us through this item as well. Thank you, Jeff. Mackenzie Howran for the record. Not sure which agenda item I'm more excited to present on. It's a toss up. Um, our open enrollment process has, is being updated. We are going through the process of modernizing our practices. Uh, so I'm very excited about this. Our open enrollment process for WCSD specific policies, so everything we talk about here with this committee when it comes to medical, dental, prescription, and life insurance through Washoe County School District, this open enrollment will be conducted in an online submission pro uh, process now. So it'll be an electronic Microsoft form that will be emailed out to all of our benefits eligible employees. Uh, the form itself takes less than five minutes to complete if they are not going to make any changes. If members are going to make changes, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes. The reason we made the decision to move forward with this process is to improve our employee experience, um, improve our internal processing times within the benefits department, and provide consistent messaging from our benefits department. And then the overarching reason and foundation for all of it is we want to ensure that everything our department does is in we follow board policy and re, uh, regulation so those are the four big reasons why um, part of the reason i am excited that we're making this process improvement is in the next few years we'll be moving to a new erp system and so our human resources business and it departments are very familiar with this project but it'll have an impact on, on our entire district right um, it'll significantly improve how we communicate and process all things from payroll, benefits, HR, you name it. Um, and so when we make that shift to our new ERP system, benefits would move open enrollment online then. So we're just moving ahead, right? We're going to move it electronic now. So when we move to our new ERP system, we're ready to go. Um, this new process will start next Monday. So employees will get an email that has the link and also a guide that walks them through how to complete the new electronic form. 
And open enrollment will be live from September 30th through no Friday, November 1st. It ends up being about five weeks long. Um, the question we're getting right now is what they can do with their third party vendor policies, because we know that historically their open enrollment process, they've covered all policies that are deducted out of their paycheck. Once our open enrollment process is completed, our employees will still have the opportunity and availability to meet with American Fidelity, for example, to talk about any supplemental policies that they would like to add. Any questions for me on open enrollment? Uh, Rachel. Um, so my question has been the, the issue that we've always had with live enrollment. What happens when people don't go through the process? If they don't complete the uh -huh. form? Well, one, one of the things when we talk about improving internal processing times, we're going to know each and every day who's completed their open enrollment form and who hasn't. And so our outreach and communication is going to be much more tailored than it has before. Um, our benefits team is prepared to learn in real time. And so if we're seeing that we have low enrollment or low completion rate of this electronic form, um, at Vaughn, which they won't because you're there. It's going to be great. <laughs> um, but in theory, if it were to be low at Vaughn, um, I could schedule time at Vaughn to come and help support people complete their electronic form. Um, at the end, it will be a, a passive enrollment. So if they haven't submitted it, they will roll over. Okay. Yep. Good. That, that is very good to know. And to be very honest, we always have concerns at Vaughn because of our new staff. Yeah. And so... Um, I appreciate that there is a rollover process, a passive option, and those folks who forget will get contacted personally, not just by me. Okay, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, they'll be contacted by you and us. Okay. It'll be great. Well, are you going to give us a list to the school? Uh, I don't think I'll give a list for HIPAA purposes, but I can at least communicate that your enrollment's low. Let's nudge some, some of your friends out there. Yeah. Robert? Um, in the past, new employees who were onboarded in August do not necessarily need to go through open enrollment. Is that true as well this year? So our new employees, if they're questioning, they don't need to? Nope. New employees do not have to complete it. Um, if they do want to make changes, because we do know that some, when people enroll in August, and then sometimes they see the deductions on their paycheck and they realize they want to make some changes, or any qualifying life event happens, right? And they do want to make changes during open enrollment. So. Um, some of our members have been on our plan for almost two months at this point. So they are eligible to complete it, but they don't have to. Doesn't look like we have any other questions. Mackenzie, thank you. Uh, it's exciting that this will be an online process. Very excited about that. Okay, that'll close item 2.04. Uh, we'll move on to item 2.05, approval of the minutes of the July 17th, 2024 meeting of the group insurance committee committee this item is for possible action do we have any public comment on this item no okay i will entertain a motion when ever someone is ready to do so robert i move that we adopt the uh minutes from the july 17 2024 meeting as presented seconded rachel drake Thank you. All right. Any further discussion on this item? All right. Uh, then all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. We'll move on to our closing items. Item 3.01, public comment. Do we have any public comment? No. Okay. Thank you. Our next meeting will be here in this room at 4 p.m. on October 23rd, 2024. And with that, the meeting is adjourned at 4.37 p.m. Good job, Mackenzie. I appreciate it.